caught on this computer. Great. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Group 1E Zoom Zoom session. So I'm going to start the recording. By the way, I already had a training and a discussion with some of the students, and I, had from, I heard from Moni, and I heard from Marianne, and from Zanele. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about Assignment 2, because Assignment 1 is due on Monday. And um, you have to get that done, right? There's nine questions out there. It'll take you about 10, 15 minutes if you know your work, but less than that. So let's see what I'm going to talk about today. And let's see where I'm going to start from. I'm going to start with this thing about Assignment 2. I'm sharing my screen. I'm not sure if you are able to see it. Uh, let me go back to my share. Your screen is being shared. Uh, Moni, are you able to see my screen, Moni? Yes, uh, it is being shared. Great. So let's look at assignment two. Assignment two, you know, it's believe me, believe it or not, I actually get questions, where's assignment two and how do I find it? And, uh, and I also want to do, a, uh, we talk a little bit about this thing about fun with functions. And on our, um, there was a question out here. There was a question from Clinton. He spoke about this RAND function, R-A-N-D, random. So I'll, I'll just answer that question because the question came today, All right? So let's just open up code blocks. Let's just open up code blocks. And here's my program. Moni, can you see my program, Moni? Uh, not yet. At the moment, I can see the start menu. Oh, there, I can see the program. Uh, can Great. I ask you a favor too? Sure. Is it possible that you could put the link for the WhatsApp group in the chat? Yes. Yes, yes, by all means, let me do that for you now, now. Thank you, because you are my star student right now, and you are helping me along, right? So I'm going to share that. Uh, let's see that. Invite to the group link. By the way, anyone, if you can, or you can also be my star students for asking me questions, right? So there we go. I'm saying copy the link, and I'm putting that in the chat. Zoom. Um, oh, boy, where's this chat starting now? I'm, I'm a Teams guy. I like MS Teams all the time. So forgive me if I take a little bit of extra time to move around the screen. Uh, where's the chat? There we go. Right. Moni, it's in the chat. Perfect. Thank you very much. Great. OK. And, and let me just remind you and everybody else, we don't say good morning and good afternoon to everybody in the chat. We don't uh, talk about. Uh, you know, any motivational or religious things or any of that in the WhatsApp group. It's purely, purely C++. We only talk C++, right? And it's only our group. We don't worry about the math story or IS or any information systems and all of it, right? Okay, because we don't want to crowd uh, the conversation as well. Right, so, and, and also there's something about the Poppy app. We don't share information and everything. It's only for us, right? So let's look at my code blocks now. I'm going to share my screen again. And I'm going to talk about this thing called functions. Now, why I'm talking about functions uh, if for assignment two. So, Monet, can you see my little function out there? I call it print heading, right? Uh, it's still loading up for a second. Oh, OK. There we go. Right. I can so, see it now. so there we go. It says in line number five, this is a money function. And in this money function, I'm only using C out statements. And it's got C out, and it looks little. It looks quite pretty out there with all those stars. What do you think about that, Money? Star, 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 star. And then yeah, it's got it's another nice C border. out. Yeah, and it's got a, a backslash T. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Money, I know you missed it because this is your first Zoom session. This was the tabulate key, right? It allows you to tab. Uh, and I've got a little heading out there and all that goes with it. So, Money, this is where I am calling my function, right? I'm calling my function. What I'm going to do is, because I'm teaching out now, and I'm just going to make this a little prettier so that, you know, you don't get to see all the other things. I'm just, uh, I'm just commenting that out, right? So a comment statement allows me to basically tell the compiler, compiler, ignore everything that I have out here because I don't want the people to see it, right? So, only if you look at my, uh, program again, I've got the program, uh, it's IO stream, and I've got bool check prime, oh, this is the one about the prime numbers uh, money. 
and I've got this pro this little function. It says void print heading. It's got this program inputs the number, it determines if it is a prime number or not. It uses functions, and I put my name out there. Now, in line number sixteen, uh, Moni, I'm actually calling this function. I'm calling it by its name, and the name is called print heading. When I call a function, it's like how I'm calling upon you, Monet. I'm calling upon you and I'm saying, Monet, what's the answer to my question? That's what I'm doing. And now Monet is giving me the answer. For instance, if I had asked you, Monet, what is this thing about variables? And then Monet <laughs> starts talking to me and telling me that a variable is a container. And you gave me some definitions or some you know, uh, characteristics associated with the variable names. So Monet, you were the expert in that field. The same thing happens with this function out here. This function called print heading knows how to print headings. And that's what it does out here. So in line number 16, when I am calling the function by its name, print heading, I am expecting all these lines to be executed, line 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, I'm not sure if any of you noticed that this function has the word void in front of it, V-O-I-D. Uh, there's 36, 26 of you on the call. Anybody wants to talk to me? What's a void function? <laughs> Kitso, you there, Kitso? Yes, thank you, sir. How are uh, you, Kitso? Fine, and how are you? Um, well, excellent. Now that you're on, my, on the call, talk to me. Okay. You, did you see this word void before? Yes, I have read about it in the uh, C++ study guide. Great. Can you tell me what void does, uh, Kitso? Void uh, would descri describe the return variable of our uh, print heading function. And in this case, uh, void just uh, simply tells the program to not actually return a value when calling upon the print heading function. Yeah, so you've been reading great, right? Moni, you heard that, Moni. You said void does not give me a return value. Yeah and, if you, yeah. yeah, and if you look um, um, at the bottom of my screen, I'm actually saying return zero. I'm actually not returning anything. And if you look at my other function, Moni, can you see my function on line 41? It's uh, called bool. Scrolling down now. Yeah, there we go. Right. Can you see what it says? It says return is prime. Check that out. Yes. Moni. And, and Moni, did you notice how I wrote the word is prime? Talk to me about okay. that. With the underscore instead of a space, so I'm assuming yes. it's a variable name. Yes, yes. So there we go. I'm adding to what you have told me about variable names, Moni. A variable name, if I want to have a space in between, I need to join them, right? I need to join these two, marry the two together with, you know, tying the knot kind of thingy, right? So I put an underscore so that I am sure that I am by by one of the rules regarding variable names. A variable name must be one word, no spaces in between, right? So, uh, Kitso, as you correctly pointed out, here's my void function. I'm not really returning anything. I'm not giving a value as such. I am just displaying whatever's in here. There's a C out, C out, C out statements. That's all I'm doing, right? So let's run this program. Let's run the program. Let's do a compile, a compile out there, compiling it. And there's only one line that's gonna run basically, line number 16. So let's do a build and run. Oops, it's running my previous program, my random. Let's just close that. Should not be doing that. The prime. And let's do a build and run. And let's see what happens. Oopsie, if this happens, I, I, I just tend to that I don't want to waste your time and my time. Let's do another compile and out and drive. Right, check it out, Moni, check it out, Moni. Kitso, check it out. Can you see what he did? Let's look at the program. It says line number 15, I just declared a variable out there. Line number 16, I said, I'm calling upon the function print heading. Moni, how's that? So it's like I'm calling yeah. upon you. I'm calling upon you. I'm saying, Moni, what is the uh, rules so regarding variables? Kitso, I'm calling upon you, Kitso, and I'm talking about Kitso. What are the rules? Kitso, display this for me. 
Kitzel, you there, Kitzel? Yes, I am. I right. Am. So I'm I'm going calling upon you, Kitzel. And isn't this lovely and nice and you know my my program, my main program in line number fourteen, Kitzel. It only has one, two, three lines out there. Well, and the yes. end returns zero. So this is the whole purpose yes. of using functions, Kitzel, where I use a function so that I make my program more readable, more modular in structure, right? So um, yes. it's like I'm, I'm calling two people now. I'm calling Kitzo and I'm calling on Monet. Monet is a function, Kitzo is a function. Um, Monet's purpose today was to tell me about variable names. Every time I want to ask him about a variable name, I'll call Monet. Every time I want to talk about what's his void function, I'm going to call upon Kitzo. So that's the purpose, basically. It makes my life easy, don't you think? So that I've got people to help me in my Zoom session. Now, yes. if I wanted to, and I needed to change uh, print heading, the function print heading, I must ask Kitso to do it. Right? Kitso, I'm going to say, Kitso, you're no longer going to change print, print, print of and government. You're going to say, Group E student is Kitso. Right? So now when I build and run it, I'm going to run it with. With, with Kitso's uh, name in it, right? So you'll notice because I'm using Kitso's name in the print heading, I have to go into that function to work with it. So it's like this. If I want to make a sandwich, I got to go to the kitchen to make a sandwich, right? Because that's where I keep all my bread, my cheese, my peanut butter and everything. So the same thing with the function. If I need to work with the function, I must go into that function to sort it out. And when I want to work, call the function, I call it by its name, right? This is the simplest and easiest way to explain what a function is. Now, Kitso, Morning, why do you think I'm talking about this, Kitso and Morning? About functions. Yeah. Uh, they help uh, make your code uh, a little bit more dynamic, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what else? Because. Uh, I think in the sense that if you wanted to print the uh, heading twice, instead of going through over all that code from line uh, six to 12, you can just call the function to, uh, on the second line and have it do all that work. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's what I've been doing with Moni all the time. Moni, haven't I been calling upon you all the time, Moni? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. right. So I've been calling you how many times? I think I mentioned your name about 10 times already. Right? So the same thing happens with the function, Monet and Kitso. If I want to call it up 10 times, all I got to do is call it by its name. And whatever attributes that that function has, whatever purpose it has, it will talk to me all the time. So let's try it out. Can you see uh, Kitso, I'm calling it out twice. Let's go and uh, build and run it now. And I'm building and running it. Check it out, Kitso. Kitso, check that out. Yes. Morning, what do you think about that, Morning? It saved me from typing that out all over again. Yes, exactly. All right, so that's the purpose of the function. So one, it makes your program modular so that my main function doesn't become too long. And I'm also able to call it up and I'm able to uh, make it such that if I want to use it two or three times, I call it by its name two or three times, right? So there's another important reason why I'm talking about functions. Uh, Kitso and Moni. Yeah. What, what do you think that reason would be? Why would I be having a Zoom session with you today? Well, and talking about functions. Functions are probably going to be a big part of the assignment too. Uh, yeah, Moni. That's, that's the whole thing. This is, this is my strategy with you guys. We all struggle together to get our assignment credits, right? Once we get our assignment credits and our DP mark, then we start worrying about the examination. Uh, I've already given out uh, October 2022 exam paper. I'm not sure if you saw that, uh, Moni. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, I went through the, the email and some of the documentation that you sent Yeah, us. yeah, yeah, but don't worry, we'll get to that right now. So you are absolutely right. One of the reasons for me doing this is because uh, it's part of assignment two. So let's look at assignment two. Let's look at assignment two. Which one is that? Right, so there's someone. Someone asked me, "Where's assignment two? If I look carefully, it's uh, there. It is there. It is at the assessment two. If I look at assessment two, it says the format has changed. 
There it is. Money, are you able to see my screen where it says assignment two? Uh, yeah, it's currently downloading and you're opening it now. Great, great. Yeah, it's open. So a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about assignment one, uh, the question one, uh, two or three weeks ago, if you look at my previous videos, I told you how to work on question 1A. And also question 1B, I made a little YouTube video. One of the students asked me during the week and I forwarded that, right? Uh, you can look at my. Now, if you look at question, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this percentage sign and this Boolean just now. But if I look at this question out here, if I look at this question, this is pretty, pretty and I'll talk about switch next week if you like as well. But question three, it says, a function named print heading golden sales company. This program inputs a number of items sold by a salesperson and prints the amount of paid due. Check it out, Moni, what do you think about this? It looks very similar, doesn't it? Ooh. Something we've seen recently. Yeah, I don't even do assignment questions. I don't help you, Moni. Do I help you with assignment questions? Uh, this is more than different enough. Of course, it's different, <laughs> absolutely different, right? But they tell you out here that they want to use a function. Like you correctly pointed out, Moni, one of the purposes of this Zoom session is to help you get to grips with concepts that deal with the assignment question. So this may just help you with this assignment, right? If I look at the way a function is and how the function has been written. So I've given you a head start with that. Now, if I look at it, it says, please input the number of items sold. If I look at my uh, code blocks program, there it is. So I'm not gonna call this up again, right? I'm not gonna call this up again. I just need to say, see out, please. What did the question say there? Please. Uh, it says, please input the number of sales made or something. Yeah, right, right, right. So I'm gonna put it out there. Please input the number of whatever. Right, so that's that's the way it goes. So, Moni, am I helping you with the question with the assignment question, Moni? No, no, it's different enough. I think you're safe. It is different. It is different. Now, let's make a little rule of thumb. Whenever I have a C in statement above it, I should have a C out statement, right? So that I tell the user uh, it's not just a flashing screen that you need to enter something out there, which I've done in the next example, right? So I'm going to talk about that here. So I told you any program, if you look at my previous videos, has input, processing, and output. So in this example, this was from Adore. A couple of weeks ago, Adore asked me a question. She says, so what is the story with the prime numbers, right? Uh, Adore, are you on the call? Adore, are you here today? Adore, no, she's not here, okay. so. But she asked me the question. By the way, this is how I structure my Zoom sessions in the morning. When a student asks me a question during the course of the week or on a Saturday the following week, I help them answer it. I'm here to serve you, all right? So that's what I'm here to do. So this is my input part. So I, I'm trying to teach you ways of basically looking at uh, a strategy to try to, to work with the program. This is my input. In order for me to do some processing, I gotta have some input, right, Moni? Yes, exactly. Yes, so um, I have to have a number to determine whether it's a prime number or not, because that's today's purpose. Here's my input, I'd say enter a positive integer. Well, I'm saying positive because uh, I just said, you know, prime numbers are the way it is, the maths part of it. And here I go and I say, listen here, C in N. As soon as I use the variable N, I got to declare it, and that's what happens in line number 15. So let's make another rule. Every variable that I use in uh, C++, I got to declare it. This is my processing part. This is my processing part, right? So out here is where I do my processing. And it so happens that processing has a decision to take place that happens out here. If this number is a prime number, right? So here I'm calling a prime number. If it is, I need to go and call upon a function in order to do that. And it so happens that, let's talk again a couple of uh, minutes ago, uh, when I needed to find out what was the void function, who did I speak to? Kitso, Kitso, you there, Kitso? Yes, I am. Right, so Kitso, you are my function for void. Like telling me what void is all about. 
Now I'm yes. going to change my name. I'm not going to call you uh, void print heading. I'm going to say you are the one that's going to tell me how to check for a number is prime or not. So this is where I'm doing my function call. Now it so happens that I'm doing it in an if statement so that it makes the programming easier for me, right? A little more compact. I could have called it upon like the way I did it in line number 16. But I wanted to determine whether the function is going to spit out or output a prime number. So quickly talk to me, Kip. So do you know the rules that uh, en enable me to determine whether a number is prime or not? Uh, I believe a prime number uh, describes a number that's divisible by uh, one and it's uh, in itself. Okay, okay. So see how important mathematics is. By the way, I'm taking for granted that you know mathematics as a programming student. You should know board mass. And now we're talking about another mathematical concept called prime numbers. We also spoke about integers. That's mathematics. We also spoke about float, which is real numbers, right? So math is very important. But if you did metric a long time ago, uh, Moni, you sound like you did metric a long time ago, Moni. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely been a while. Yeah, it's been a while, right? But it's okay. We, we can get away with a little bit of, you know, board mass, this thing about uh, the modulus and percentage and, and all that goes with it, right? As long as you know, like, in terms of, I use the word prime number, go and find out what is a prime number. So here I am calling upon the function check prime. Like I call upon money to give me an answer, and I'm calling upon um, Kitso to give me an answer. And guess what? This time, the function is at the bottom, right? Now, again, you come to me as an e-tutor to give you additional resources. You could have written this function on the top. You could have also written it at the bottom, right? Bottom, when I say after the ending of the program, it won't affect anything, right? So if I want to call it up, I can call this and put it on the top. Let me run the program to show that it works. Just like, oh, there we go. There's it. I call it out there. In line number four, I said, bool check prime and it passes across an integer. That's where I declare my function to say, this is what I'm going to use. I think one of the rules about programming in C++ is that before you use something, you've got to declare it, right? It's like you're going to the airport and say, anything to declare. If you're at the border, anything to declare. Before you enter the country, you've got to tell them, yes, I've got uh, $500 million and uh, let's not talk about where it was kept in a suitcase or not. <laughs> Right, I gotta declare it. I can't just bring it into the country, you know. Uh, see, I miss I miss having face-to-face -face lectures where I'll get to grips the student, right? Oh, I got Cuban cigars. I gotta declare it, right? I hope you are laughing out there, and y'all got my joke. So before I use the function, I've gotta declare it, and that's where I declare it in the top. It so happened that I'm using it at the bottom. All right. Uh, now, I do have a question. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Please ask the question. With the the bull check prime function, if you had written the written out the function at the top, would you you probably wouldn't have to declare it then, right? It's because you yeah. it after it's been used that uh, perfect you need to declare it. Perfect, perfect. Just like the print heading. Thank you very much for that. You're very observant, Moni. Right? Can you see? I didn't have to declare it because I'm using print heading and I'm using it immediately. You check. I'm calling it up there. Right, Moni? You check that out, Moni? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if I had to go and put it at the bottom, then I got to declare it on the top, right? Yeah, makes sense. Okay, right, great. So let's just build and run it quickly to see that it works. Uh, let's build and run it. Oops, oops, oops. That's because I got an error out here, right? Let me just build and run it. And I've got another error. That's because of my comment statement, right? Uh, let's see it running. Yeah, there we go. It says, Enter a positive integer, right? So I'm going to enter a positive integer. Give me any number that you think of, um, uh, Moni, between three and five integer. Any, any? Three and five. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm so trying to, you know. Four. Oh, hey, that's the same number I was thinking of, Moni. <laughs> right, Kitso, you too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, all right, so right, right. Hey, four is not a prime number, Kitso, just like you pointed out. Four has more than one factor. It has four, two, and one, right, are factors. Let's just run it one more time to see if the definition of what Mori and Akitsu mentioned. So I'm gonna take a number like three. Oh, wait, let me do my, let me do my joke, let me do my joke. Um, 
Moni, again, I want you to think of a number. It is there, any number you want to, any number, but it must be between six and eight. So uh, seven on that one. Okay, okay. Now I was thinking of that uh, too. Kitso, what were, what number were you thinking of, Kitso? Seven as well. Ah, seven. And guess what? Seven is a prime number. Like you correctly pointed out, seven is a prime number because it has only two factors, seven and itself. Again, this is primary school mathematics. I know, morning you have to go back a long time ago, learn about factors. Uh, not that long ago. Let's calm down. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Well, okay, in my case, I got to go back a long time ago, right? But I was a school teacher, so not that long ago, right? <laughs> about five years or so, Famoni, what, five, six years ago? Uh, a bit okay, longer okay. than that. Okay, yeah. okay, seven, yeah, seven years 12. ago. Seven, seven, <laughs> seven, just like a prime number, right? So if you don't get to grips, uh, this is something else about teaching and learning. If you don't get to grips about the concept of a factor and the word prime number, then you're going to have difficulty with the programming concepts involved out here. We are actually taking mathematical concepts and we are implementing it in a C++ program. All right. So um, now let's talk about this. It's so, so we know it works. But just to show uh, because of Moni's question, thank you for that question. Moni, I'm going to copy the entire thing. Control X, I blocked it. And Moni, I'm going to put it on the top of here. Right? How's that, Moni? Does it, does it make you feel more comfortable, Moni? Yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to make sure. It's, ah, uh, great, great. Let me just run it again, Moni, just to show you that it works, you know, and uh, I'm not making up anything else. Uh, build and run. Yay! Give me, give me a positive integer between six and eight again, Moni. Seven. Ah, lovely. Ah, it works. It works. It works. Right? And you notice I didn't have to have that extra line out there. So I've declared it on the top and I've used it. So let's talk about this function. Now, Kitso told me that uh, he's going to be check prime out here. This is where I'm having the function call. And on the top here, it says bool check prime. So remember, Kitso, you told me that this was a void function in line number 19, void print heading. Kitso? Hello? Hello, Kitso. Yes, you told me that this is a yes. void function. So what that happened yes. there was there was no... Com, uh, no processing that took place. I was simply displaying values. But guess what yes. happens out here with Kitso? In line number four, it says this is a bool function, meaning yes. whatever comes out of this function is going to be yes. either true or false because bool is actually short for money. Boolean. Boolean. Boolean, right? Okay, it's short yes. for Boolean. So Boolean variable. By the way, it was a mathematician. It's named in honor of him, George Boole. See, I teach our history at no extra cost. What do you think about that? Morning. Sorry, uh, your connection is a little choppy at times. Oh, no, and I've got fiber at home. Okay, all right. Well, Here's maybe my it's my side. I'm, I'm just saying what I, like okay, your, okay. your audio gets a little choppy in moments, but it's not ah. bad. Okay, okay, just you, uh, please feel free to stop me anytime. You, uh, Kitso, and you can keep your mic on all the time, right? So there's this talk about bool, right? There's bool. Let's, let's look for bool. B O L E A, Boolean function. If you want to learn anything more, go to my, uh, my friend uh, Google and he'll tell you all about Boolean variables, right? Boolean. They yeah, talk about Boolean. And let's talk about this mathematician called George Bool. Uh, G E O R. I think it was George. I'm not. There we go. George Bull. He was a mathematician. Here's it. The English mathematician. Right. Da 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 da. da. I, I assume that's what their name is after Boolean, right? Okay. So what comes out of this function is either true or false. That's what it is. Now let's look at what this function has. In line number four, this is called a parameter. Int n is a parameter. I am passing across a variable, right? Some value. And guess where the value is being passed across? The value is being passed across in line number 37. So in line number 37, I'm passing across seven. Can you see in line 33, enter a positive number? The one that Kitso, you, uh, Moni, and I, we all thought about seven, right, Moni? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right, so in line number 37, I'm actually- You're using that. Yes, 
I'm transferring control to line number four. In line number four, uh, Zanele, Zanele, I'm bringing you into the conversation. So now uh, seven is being passed out there. And that seven is gonna be used inside this function. That's what a function does, right? It uses it. If you notice again, Kitso, in line number 19, we did not have a parameter. Kitso, yes. check that out. Yes. It, yes. No, no, nothing of that sort, right? But yes. in this line number four, we've got a parameter. Again, we've got to declare it. We've got to declare that that parameter that's being passed across has to be an integer. And if I wanted to pass across another parameter, I can use a comma and I can say M, right? I can pass across two if I like, or three. But because you all are starting off, let's just pass one across. In line number five, five I'm actually part, I'm making sure that I'm stipulating that this function is gonna be true. So I said, whatever happens, it's true, right? I'm assigning a value. And I can do that because a is prime takes on two values, true or false. Now, again, why I chose this uh, as an question, two weeks ago, someone asked me about Boolean variables and they asked me about uh, and, and the or, in fact, it was last week. By the way, one of the rules of mathematics, let's get this over and done with, if n is equal to zero or n is equal to one, that means it is not a prime, right? Let's just run this program and see what happens if I enter in. Uh, zero or one. Let's enter in zero. It's going to tell me zero is not a prime. Let's run the program again. I'm going to put in one. One is not a prime. One is basically a unique number. If you're not sure about that, go to Google and ask Google. Google is one a prime number. So that's what happens out here. And let's see, let's look at this, this symbol here that they have. Last week, if you looked at my last week's Zoom lesson, I spoke about uh, or and the and symbol. Here's the or, this is or. If n is, e is equal to, there's a double equal to sign. That's very important. This is where I'm making a decision. If I just put a single equal to sign, then it's an assignment statement. If n is equal to zero or n is equal to one, that means is prime is false. That means it's not a prime. So what happens is the value that I'm assigning out here gets returned. Return is prime. And you see how important that word return is. Whereas in the void function, Kitso, you there, Kitso? Yes, I am. Kitso, do I have a return function in line number 26 or above line number 26? No, you don't. No. Money, do I have one there, Money? No, no, you're no. not changing any values or anything. Exactly. So exactly. But look at line number 16. Can you see that, uh, Money? Yeah. I returns a, a value for is prime. Correct, correct, correct. Well, the same thing happens in the main man, the main function. Can you see return zero, right? Yeah. Uh, you must have seen that in the first couple of programs, even though you did a C out, you put a return zero because I'm not giving out anything, right? By, and by yeah. the way, Monet and Kitso, main is also called a function, right? It's also a function. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right? It's, it is. it's a main function, it's a main man. You can't do without it, right? So that's the story about this function. So I've given you a couple of rules. A function has to be declared either above or below the program. I've got a, a morning correctly pointed out. I save an extra line and put it on the top. It has to have a name, just like the word variable. I have, a, have, I have to have it declared to be either Boolean, integer, or float. And I may or may not need parameters, right? So I looked at print heading. No parameters, Boolean has a parameter. So this is the input part. And out here is where I have some computation taking place. It so happens that the computation that takes place in line number seven and eight is a decision. In programming, we make decisions all the time. If I look at line number 10, line number 10 has a for loop in it. So last week, if you looked at my last week's Zoom lesson, I spoke about for loops. Any for loop has a beginning. Here's my beginning in, in i is equal to two. Now, one of the reasons I'm starting with two is because I took care of n is equal to zero and n is equal to one. i is less than equal to n divided by two. Remember I told you about factors earlier on? 
the maximum factor that a number can have is basically half of it. So if I have like 20, the factors are one, two, four, five, 10, right? 10, 10 times two will give me 20, right? So that's uh, why I'm going through to half of the loop, right? So if this was seven, it's gonna go to uh, seven divided by two, which is 3.5 because it is int i, I drop out the 3.5. Now, this is also a very important uh, condition out here, this percentage sign. In this lesson, basically I'm talking about modulus, I'm talking about uh, factors, I'm talking about prime numbers. This modulus sign, this percentage sign ensures that I'm only looking at the remainder. And remember I told you a factor, you have to know what that math uh, definition is. A factor is a number that goes into another number exactly. There's no remainder. So if I take the number and I determine after going through the loop, which again, I did last week, and I say that, hey, there's no remainder, right? So if I say seven divided by two, three, four, five, six, it goes through and it says that I'm getting Oh, sorry, sorry, let me just go through that. If n modulus i is equal to zero, that means I do have uh, a factor of that number. That means it's not a prime number, right? So is prime is false. But because I stipulated in line number five that prime is true, so if I took the value like uh, four and I went and divided it by two and I found that I got no remainder as such, that means it is indeed two times two is four. That means line number five would have been okay with telling me that it is a prime number. Well, this break statement simply says come out of it. It's not good programming practice to have break in there, but there is a statement like that. And ultimately in line number 16, it displays for me the value of either true or false. If N was seven, it will go through the loop and you'll say, listen here, it cannot find any factors of seven besides one and seven. Sorry? Hello? Right? And ultimately it will tell me that it is indeed prime, right? Because line number five will kick in. All right. I'm going to, it's already uh, five to one. I'm going to pause out here and ask if there's any questions. And I'll go through this example with you again as a summary. Right. I, I did quite a bit of work today, uh, but I'm trying, I had to do all of this to help you with assignment too. Yes. Kitso, you there, Kitso? Yes, I am. Right, Kitso, let's just quickly do a quick revision of what, what I've tried to achieve today. Okay. Kitso, help me. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Kitso. Oh, uh, today we, uh, di we discussed a bit about functions, their return types, their uh, parameters, and uh, what they are, uh, uh, what, what kind of uh, values or content they are able to return. We discussed a bit about uh, in, uh, variables, integers, uh, using them uh, within the said uh, functions, how, we, how functions can make our code more uh, modular, dynamic, and uh, easier to interpret, and, uh, be, and how they can be used to increase our uh, efficiency. Ah, thank you. Thank you, kids. So well, nicely said. Uh, Moni, do you want to add to any of that, Moni? Mm, Moni, uh, Man, sorry, you're such I, a good job. No, no problem. Go ahead. My internet crashed. I have no idea what uh, was just said. I'm sorry. Now, blame it on load shading. Blame SCOM. Don't worry. <laughs> Moni, is there, what else did we do today, Moni? Tell, or you talk. Tell me what's your takeaway from this hour that we are sitting on this floor? Uh, well, the, the important things that we covered today were uh, like functions, uh, the use of, of how important it is to declare functions or write functions before they're being used, how important mm -hmm. it is to have an, uh, an output statement before an input statement to make sure mm -hmm. that people know what they're inputting. 
mm -hmm. uh, where variables are used and like in the parameters for functions, for example. Um, and then Boolean values, uh, Boolean uh, functions working with true or false values, uh, returning those values so that they can be used somewhere else. Uh, that's basically it, I think. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Moni. Thank you, Moni. Right? But, and we also spoke about assignment one, but that's not in the recording, right? So those people that didn't join the call, they, they're going to miss out on all of them, right? That was for Linesh. Linesh, are you still with us, Linesh? And you only started today's programming uh, tasks. Linesh, unmute. He did unmute. I feel like he's having some trouble with his microphone, honestly. I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Linesh, you are a networking guy. Linesh, you're supposed to sort it out, Linesh. Right. Next week, when we talk about these things, we'll discuss it a little further. But by next week, you should have worked on your assignment too, because it's due on the 8th of May, right? Maybe ma'am will give us an extension. I don't know. But we can't depend on that, right? So if I look uh, at my... Yes. I, I have a question regarding to that. Uh, friend, uh, someone, friend in the group chat, I sent a message earlier, uh, uh, noting something about a four day extension period on the uh, assignment too. So uh, what, what is that uh, regard to? Oh, I didn't read that. Uh, just, just quickly t t tell me, um, let's look at assignment two, assignment two. Assignment two, two is there an extension? Yeah, it's in the group chat. Uh, the message was sent. No, 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 don't about... believe group chat. Don't, they, they sometimes they gossip and all of the talk, man, so don't believe that. No, it, it's an extraction from the uh, actual oh. document. I'm oh, then, then, then you believe sure. it. Right, I'm looking at the, uh, the due date. It says 8th of May. There is an automatic extension until the 8th of May. No, 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 it's until. The word is until. Oh, okay. okay. No, no, it's 8th of May, 8th of May. Okay. Right, so don't, uh, you got to work hard, got to work really hard. Linesh has to work doubly hard because he didn't do assignment one. Right, it's due on the 8th of May, 8th of May. But I have sent Mam an uh, email, hopefully she'll give you out to you. But 8th of May, so next week is the 6th of May. Uh, if we're going to meet on Saturday, we'll have to make sure that you know you have completed everything. So if you look at my previous videos, I spoke to you about question one and two, uh, 1A and 1, 1BC. I showed you how to copy and paste it into code blocks to run it. You can do the same thing for uh, this program, question 1D. It says give the correct program so that it works properly. Uh, what are the errors in there? But if you notice, they also mention that they don't mark every single question. So I think this is a simple question. This is a very simple question. They say not all questions are marked. I'm looking at it in the top, it says um, somewhere along the line, I, I read that. Assignment two, there we go, must be a submission PDF format. I, I gave you an example of, or I did that in last week's. Um, you, we, are, we do not necessarily mark all the questions. You will get 0% if you do not submit the questions that are marked. So you have to submit all the questions, but the difficult ones I feel is what they're going to mark, right? A simple one with a simple output where you can copy and paste it into code blocks and run it. They're not gonna check that I feel mark it. Right? But I could be wrong, so don't stand by that, right? So today I assisted you hopefully in trying and answering question three. By the way, question two, if you are having difficulty, I can help you along with that. But question three, I felt was more difficult. So you needed to know what is a function, and you needed to be able to uh, submit this protocol of the program and the output. So look at my tutorial later on that one. And they calculate pay. In this case, I'm talking about calculating or determining a prime number. So question four as well, they want you to do a function, a function integer power with base and exponent. And uh, you need a for loop. I spoke about a for loop today, last week, two weeks ago, a while loop. I'm not sure if you have any questions. Question 4B talks about Boolean, whether it is true or false. Uh, Monet, check it out, Monet. Write a function called is equal. Yeah. yeah. Monet, and returns true if the characters are the same. 
Does it okay. sound familiar, Moni? Yes, yes. Sounds like something we may have covered at some point. Yeah, something, something. Yeah? Just be prime about it, all right? Okay. Uh, there we go. Twice that accepts two integers as formal parameters and then multiplies them to return the calling program. Ah, that sounds familiar as well. That looks okay as a function, Money. There's yeah. a function called twice. It accepts two integers. So Money, if I want to accept two integers, that means I got to have two over here, right? I got to have int m as well, right? I got to have it there, or I could have put it without it. And if I have two over there, I got to have two over here, all right? Right, check it out because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two of them, right? These are actual parameters and these are your formal parameters on the top. I think it's the other way around. Ah, it doesn't matter what the names are. We know where they found. All right. So that's question four. So you, uh, as soon as you finish, please go and start working on that. Question five is pretty intensive. I've been getting lots of queries about this and I feel that's what they're going to mark. And that's, that's the end of the program. If you notice, there's my calling in question five, get judge data score one, get judge data score two. There's my function call. There's my parameter that I'm passing, right? These are my global variables out here, double score. Uh, uh, score one is of uh, type double, score two is of type double and so forth, all right? And they also talked about functions in here. The entire question five has to deal with functions, right? Hopefully I've assisted you in an hour. And um, if you have any more questions, please speak now or whatever, hold your peace. There's somebody on the chat here. Hi, I'm the back the recording start. Okay, Dinesh, start on YouTube, right? Dinesh, you go to my YouTube channel. Yes, is there a question? Go ahead. Uh, going back to where you were declaring that Boolean function. Yes. And the parameter, sir. So like, it's just a matter of you stating what kind or what type of parameter you're going to be setting, whether it be it an integer, Boolean, yes. or float. Yes, that's a very that's good question. Much it. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Make this a rule, right? If you are not sure what your variable is going to be, make it a double, right? This is a rule of thumb that I use with my students. But if you know that you're gonna have whole numbers in there, you make it an integer. If you're gonna be using it as a variable to count, you make sure that it's an integer, right? If it is dealing with position, someone came out first, second, third in a race, that is a whole number, that's an integer. But if you're gonna be doing some division with it, then you make it a double or a float, okay? Does that help you with the declaring variables? Yes, sir. And then last one is that, is it possible that since that's going to be a Boolean function and it also takes a Boolean parameter, is that is that possible? Yes, yes. But why would you want to do that, right? It all no, depends on the question. Out of curiosity oh, okay. for, for this assignment, don't want to get so complicated, right? There, uh, twice and is equal to, you take the number and you are the character and you work out whether they are the same. All right, so if you look at number line number seven, where I spoke about if n is equal to zero or n is equal to one, you got to determine whether it's the same. I can't tell you too much and I'll be giving you the answer, right? You got to struggle uh, with but it. I get it, I get it, you get it. I get it. Right, yes, sir. so Boolean variables are either and, which I did two, uh, a week ago, or and not, right? So yes. something is and, and, or, or you know, all right, thank, you, thank you for that question. Very good question. Next question, speak now or forever hold your peace. Hello. Talk to me. Marianne, are you still on the call? Oh, Marianne. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay, great, Marianne. Okay, great, Marianne. Talk to me. Do you have a question? I don't think so, sir. Okay, all right. I, I went through a, a number of lessons, if you looked at it, I went through all the way to functions and I summarized it. So, Abdul, I can see you. Thank you for putting your, your, your video on. Abdul, go ahead. Unmute and talk to me, Abdul. 
Well, I just did say because it was based on that parameters with the Boolean. Oh, stuff. okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I didn't see your video. That's why I was. All right. Thank you, Abdul. I hope I answered your question. Alistair, Ashley, Clinton, Daniel, Kitso, Linesh, Matsella. Anybody with a question? Can I call it a day? I got to go shopping now. Yeah. Anybody with a question, Query? Oh, I was supposed to answer the Clinton story about random. Random uh, prime uh, door, is it? There we go. Clinton asked a question. Um, I'm sharing my screen. Clinton, this is for you. Is it Clinton? Not Clinton. Um, oh, let me go to my WhatsApp group. It was someone that asked a question out there about random. Well, I posted it in the WhatsApp group. So just to quickly help you run the random number, the, there's a problem in the, in the study guide. They asked about, I'll tell you who asked that question. Um, it was uh, Denzel Klein. Denzel Klein, are you here, Denzel Klein? Denzel, you're not here. All right, Denzel, in order to use the RAND function, you needed to have this library function, CSD library, right? and I use the time function. So why I answer this question, it's because I'm talking about functions out here. So Kitso, are you still on the call? I'll spend another five minutes. Moni, are you still on the call? Yeah, yeah, I'm still Yes, here. I am. Right, Moni, can you check here, Moni, in line number 15, I'm calling R-A-N-D. Yeah, yeah. That's a function, right? And I'm yeah. able to use that function because I am calling it up from a library. You know, earlier on, Moni, you asked me a question about where do I put the Boolean at the bottom on the top and if I need to use it, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, if you notice here, Moni, I don't have any code for random, rand, R-E-N-D. Check it out. Yeah. Look at that. No, rand is stored in the, in the library, right? So the code yeah. is already written somewhere else. So yeah. you just use the library to access that code then. Excellent. Hey, my job is at stake. Uh, Moni's going to take <laughs> it over. All right. That's correct. Because I'm having include CST a D library, right? My standard library, I'm able to use RAND. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have another lesson and I'm gonna keep money and kids are out there, whatever knowledge they have, I'm gonna use it in my program. If I take it out, this program won't work, right? Like what happened with Daniel Klein, right? If I'm running it, it says, oh, it can't find out what is uh, RAND. See the error message that is popping up there, right? The error message is popping up. It says, what does it say? C RAND was not declared in the scope. The reason it was not declared is because it can't find out what the code is to run that function, right? And in order to do that, I am including the library function. Once I include the library function, it gives it to me. Let's run the program quickly. I run it. And there's my random numbers, right? It does so happen that I stopped it at 100 and it runs, it gives me random numbers, 34, 24, 60, 95, 27, 19, 82, 52. It's not like where I asked you for a specific number between six and eight, Monet, eh? Kitso? So? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. right? And we all knew what we were talking about, right? That's because over the airwaves and the Zoom link and the internet, I projected that number onto you. But if I had to use the random function, SRAM, then I can't do that, right? Okay. So uh, Daniel Klein, I hope I answered that question for you. Thank you for that question in the WhatsApp group. And this is how I do it, right? So, so are these are those uh, numbers actually random? Because I'm seeing that we are using the uh, time library as well. Oh, uh, does okay. that uh, also yes. have to? Also helps me because every second I'm supposed to generate any number, right? Oh, okay, okay. If I take that out, let's put it inside the loop. Thank you for that question. That's a good question. Let me just, I know you're testing me to see how much I know, right? So let's put it out there. Let's just put it out there and let's run it. Let's run it now. Check that out there. Can you see the numbers remaining the same? I'm not changing it. So, oh, okay. Right, because in the loop is where I'm running this thing. Okay. Right? 
So outside of the loop, every second I wanted to go and generate another number. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So quick revision of a for loop. A for loop, very important. This is in the assignment as well. Morning, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this thing. Int i equals zero, it starts at zero, it ends uh, before uh, 10, it actually got, runs up to nine. i plus plus increases by one. All these statements yeah. are on. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is 10 times. I hope I'm right, Monet. You yeah, yeah, you. yeah. Thank you. It's 10 past one. I'm one hour, 10 minutes. Lucky I got a licensed Zoom copy. Okay. Anybody else with another, any other questions? Any other questions? I can see there's a question in the WhatsApp group as well. Could see. Oh, could see says thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, Claire. Could see. Glad to be of help. At Prenovan, please upload this to the YouTube channel. Of course I will. All right, Clinton Forrester. Thank you, Clinton. By the way, thank you to Clinton and to Kutsi and to, there's so many others that I want to say thank you to. I'm so happy with all of y'all talking and y'all helping, caring is sharing. So well done to everybody. Kitso, there's your message out there, Kitso. Hey, Rajan Reddy is typing too. Okay, if there's no more questions, can we call it a day? Can we call it a Saturday? There's, well, there's nothing else you call it. Come on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Moni, for joining me and helping me. I hope you join me again. If not, you can just do it, definitely. Thank you uh, very much for your work. You're more than welcome. I'm so happy that you had joined me. Kitso as well. Thank you, Kitso. Make sure that you take your leave and all of that next week that you join me at 12 o'clock. I like to keep 12 o'clock Saturday so that everybody knows I'm consistent. Uh, you know. Yeah, honestly, the consistency is very, very nice. Yes. Kind yes. of wish you would rub off on some of the other lecturers and tutors we have at the moment. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, that's great. All right. So thank you, Moni. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Anybody wants to put the camera on and we'll take a... Um...